Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at the second expansion to Cacao called Diamante. This small expansion has four different modules in it, including, of course, the main expansion, the main module you'll be adding in, called Diamante. You are going to be removing the original temples from the game, in which which gave you this sort of uh, you know area control vibe at the end of the game. If you had more control around these temples, you could get six coins. You know, second place would get fewer. Well, you'd remove those, and now you are going to use these diamonds that show up, and you'll be taking them, cashing them in, once you make specific sets, for some victory points. And again, there's a couple of other little variants in there. So let me show you how this works. We'll come on back after that, and I'll tell you if I think uh, this is a good expansion, if I would recommend you pick it up, if you enjoy the base game. So here are the four modules that you get with the Diamante expansion to the game. You are going to get new player tiles. You can choose to whatever combination you want from the original tiles and these uh, new tiles. You're still going to get, you know, four workers, but they have new uh, arrangements. And so you can choose to replace some of the original ones with these. You can add these in. They have rules for that if you want to play with more of these tiles. And so definitely the simplest part of this expansion uh, or, or these four modules is this one, just more player tiles if you want to play with that. So, there's that. You've got over here the Tree of Life. If you want to play with these, you are going to replace your gold mines that come in the original game with the Tree of Life. And when you play these, if you play next to it, you are going to get one gold per, uh, of, per each of your workers that touches that. So you get one gold doing this, you'd get three gold doing that. However, if you play an empty side, then they call that a, a serenity play, and you would get three gold. So if you play next to the Tree of Life with no workers at all, that is three gold coins that you get. So there is those. You've got over here this character that starts in the original setup, and when you play in the line that it is next to, I'm just gonna fake a setup over here. I know this is not the actual setup. Let's say it starts there. When I play next to a place like so, I'd get my one gold, and then this comes to my tile. If you put in the line or column that this is on, if someone else later plays in that same line or column that this is now on, they move it to their tile, and if it's when, it, when it's my turn again, if this is still sitting on one of my tiles, then I get one gold coin right away, and then I play. If it's still on one of my tiles when it comes back, I get another gold coin, and so on. Very simple addition, but a nice, clever, clean one. And then lastly, of course, we have the namesake of the expansion here, the uh, diamonds. The way this works is you are going to add these in, and every time one of these shows up, then you are going to shake out six gems from the mine card here. Da -da -da. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, put those on there. And then when uh, folks play tiles next to this, then you are going to take gems. One, two, three. And as soon as you have four different colors, you are going to cash them in for the topmost mask over here. These numbers go up, so I would cash in as soon as I have again, blam, four different ones there, cash those in and take the top mask, worth eight points to me. These points actually go up, but some of the later ones you might not be able to grab. If you focus on the gems and never get a fourth color, then you've wasted your time and were never able to achieve this. So it's pretty interesting that you are, if you choose to focus on this, you are pushing your luck towards the end of the game. You might not have enough time or different gems to actually achieve these later ones, like the tens or that final 12. And that's it. That's everything that comes in the expansion. So there you go. Let's go back up top. Let me show you what I, uh, let me tell you rather what I thought of this expansion, which modules I like, which ones I perhaps don't like and if I think it's a good addition to the base game. Okay, so there it is. This is the kind of thing that you probably know if you want to check it out, if you already like the base game, if you were not super thrilled with the base game, this is probably, again, you, you as I'm saying, you sort of know what you think about this anyway, but I'll still do uh, my breakdown here nice and quick, okay? So thematic ties folds in very nicely into the original game. I like the idea of having these gems, exploring, gathering gems cashing them in for the masks, 
that works well enough. And then all the other stuff, you know, that's that, that ties in nicely. The aesthetics are fantastic, right along with the original base game. Everything looks to be from the same artist, or, uh, you know, it appears to be. And it all folds in beautifully. If I did not tell you that this was an expansion and I simply showed the game like this to a new player, they'd have no idea. Replayability. I think it's pretty nice. I don't think Kakao is a particularly replayable game anyway. I think it has a very few moving parts. And I think that they are... Um, Again, it's the kind of game that is fun, it's breezy, it's neat to play, but it doesn't have a lot of depth, and I don't think it has a lot of replayability. I think adding this in is going to obviously give you a little bit more replayability, but when it comes to that, it's more of a sideways step than a jump forward. Seeing as to how, you remove parts of the original game and just sort of replace them with variant parts, you know? Do I like the, the parts here that replace the original stuff more? Um, some part, okay? And by that I mean like the Tree of Life, for example. You remove the gold mines and you put in the Tree of Life. It's fine. I, I, th those are, I'm okay with either one. I'm not going to say that I like the Tree of Life more than the gold uh, mines. Because the gold mines are simpler. You touch this thing with characters, for each one you get one buck or two. Cool. Tree of Life just makes your empty sides worth more. And I suppose that could allow you to be a little bit trickier, right? You could be a little more clever, but I don't think it's that big a deal. And it takes me explaining what that all, you know, that the fact that this tile breaks the rule in the game. For every character, you got a thing. So now there's this new rule. Um, the gems, on the other hand, I do like better than the temples. And I know it takes away the end game scoring for those temples. I, I, I get that. But I do like them better. I think they're more visually appealing. I think that they are. They have this push your luck aspect, which I find very interesting. And you see the end of the game coming, and it's more tense because I've got two different gems, and it's only the you know the the mask that's left is just a twelve and a ten. If I can get two other colors, the two I'm missing, bam, that's ten points. That's great. But they might not come up, hey, or I might not be the one who is able to to grab them. You know. So I do like that better than the original temples. Game length, it's in line with the other, um, with the original game. It's 35, 45 minutes, and that works well. Ease of play, as I said, the only thing that's slightly different now is the Tree of Life thing, and that one character that jumps around, right? But that's not much harder to play than the original game. I, I would not say, oh yeah, this is that kind of expansion that pushes it out of family way territory. Not at all. And then lastly, tactics and strategy. I talked about that just now a little bit. Uh, and I enjoy it. I enjoy the the tactical nature of the gems, which is, again, the main part of this expansion, really. So, yeah, that works. I guess, ultimately, my main thing is here that this box, this expansion, offers really very little uh, new content. You know, Kakao is the kind of game that's been getting promos and expansions and things like that that are all bite-sized. I mean, they really are very, very small additions to the game, right? If you think of like a Carcassonne, the Carcassonne has had a few large expansions and then a few really small ones. It's like, oh, here's six new tiles. It feels like every expansion to Cacao is those tiny ones, you know? They just happen to package four of them together in this box, that's that's all that is. But I do enjoy it. It's I think it's a neat idea, but again, it's very small very minor impact on the game, and it does not feel like it furthers the gameplay experience, it just sort of sidesteps it. It's like, oh, you liked that? Well, here's a variant, you know, this is not more, it's not richer necessarily, it's just a little different. Is that bad? Not necessarily, but it is uh, not a necessity. I would not say if you've enjoyed Cacao a lot and you want more, this is for you. No, if you enjoy the game enough and you want different, then yeah, you can try this out, okay? So, I'm not giving this a negative review, but it's also not, you know, uh, blowing my mind or anything. I enjoy it. I would say if you're a big, big fan of the original, give it a try. You'll enjoy messing around with the different little modules. But it's just all right, you know, nothing to write home about necessarily. So, there you go. That is Cacao Diamante. Thanks for tuning in and checking this out with me. I'm going to see you next time.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.